Hey guys, it's Decoran here. In today's video, we'll be building the cheapest $500 gaming and streaming setup. That is right. You'll be able to use this for 1080p gaming, or also a little bit of streaming on the side, or use this for a separate streaming PC, which is the primary case where you'll be able to multi-stream to multiple different platforms without an issue. And you'll be able to connect it to a capture card, to maybe a game console, or you could use it with another PC for a dual PC setup down the line. So let's get into the specs. For our CPU, we went the Ryzen 5 4500. This is a six core, 12 thread CPU with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.1. Now this only comes at a price of $79. That is right, this is a pretty good CPU you can get off Amazon. However, we got it for ourselves for $75 for Micro Center. So either way, it's like a $5 difference, but this is gonna be a very good CPU for our PC. Now the CPU does come with a cooler for itself, it comes with the Rave cooler. So if you do wanna use that, you can. However, you wanna spend a little bit more money to get a better performance, I would recommend the D-Cool AK400 because I've been using that one. It's so good, so easy to install. So if you want a little bit more performance for $34, I will have that link down below. For the motherboard, we went with Gigabyte 450M. This is actually a good motherboard that's only $89. That has all the stuff you need, Wi-Fi, onboard ethernet, all that jazz, and doesn't have any RGB. So it's of course a low price of $89, but it just to get the job done. For RAM, we're going with G-Skill, actual DDR4, 3,200 megahertz RAM. That is right. This is some pretty good RAM that you can get at Micro Center for pretty cheap. We actually got this for even cheaper, which was like $35 on the market. And if you were, and I bought it for 32. So I get to finally put into some use. We got this off like Facebook marketplace and I had no problems while testing it. So that's a good sign. My biggest concern with this is we're gonna build this thing and it won't work. That's gonna be the worst case scenario. So for storage, we were gonna go with the Crucial P3 one terabyte drive. However, I did not buy one of those. They're currently listed at, was it $50? They're pretty cheap right now. But honestly, I had this drive on hand. I thought I'd just use this one because it's better, which is of course is an optional one if you wanna buy it. It's the Samsung 980 Pro. This is the fastest reason right for under Samsung drive and it'll be more than enough for what we wanna do for our actual boot drive. For our GPU, we're going with the 1660 MSI. That is right. They actually don't sell these anymore. However, they are on the third hand market for less than $150. I wouldn't spend any more than that to get a 1660 card, but this will be able to do our 1080p streaming, multi-streaming, gaming, pretty much with absolute ease, with no problem whatsoever. However, I would recommend if you wanna get a better GPU instead of this one, I would actually say the 3060, 12 gigabyte model, that will be able to stream to more than three platforms because it's VRAM is amazing and it has significantly way more performance on hand compared to the 1660. So I will of course have the 3060 12 gig link down below. Uh, it's pretty much gonna be the exact model, but of course I'm gonna hook you up with the best price possible. Now for our power supply, we're going with the Thermaltake 700 watt power supply. This is non-rated, so it's just white. Of course, you can get a better power supply for like power spec for 650 watts. It's the same price as this. It's like $10 more actually. So if you do wanna get that one, I will have it linked down below if you do want a rating, but I've had no problems with these power supplies in the past. I've actually have them in like two builds right now. So if it ain't broken, don't fix it. You know what I'm saying? But this only costs $55. And of course, we'll have a link down below if you wanna use it for yourself. And if you don't, you can always get that power spec one I recommend. Next up for the PC case, we got the Monotech 100 Air ARGB case. This comes with three RGB fans. They're ARGB and of course, one exhaust fan, which is pretty nice for only $65. I actually got this for a PC case review video. Uh, definitely recommend checking that video after this video because yo, this thing has a lot of bells and whistles for only $65 that you can't really find anywhere else in the market, but it's cheap. But at the same time, it does the job, so that's all that matters. So let's get into the build process. First of all, we got our motherboard. We're gonna open this on up and pull it on out. This is gonna be really easy to actually set it up. We're actually gonna set everything on the motherboard by first closing the top of this. And we're gonna use this actually on the build process because we wanna get as much installed on the motherboard before we actually uh, place it into the case. So let's just get that for us. The first thing we're gonna install is our G-Skill RAM. So what we're gonna do is make sure to open all the RAM slots in our two and four slots because that's what we wanna do for this one. But now that we have that, we're gonna make sure the tooth is pointed towards us. Now it's in the sockets, we should be able to just push down and just pop this on in there. With that, our first slot is installed. Now we can do the other slot. When we do this, the same thing, line it on up and then just put a little bit of pressure. And with that, our RAM will be all good to go. Okay, RAM is perfectly installed, so that is awesome. Now for the CPU, what we're gonna do is pretty straightforward. We're gonna actually pull up the little lever to the side, make sure it's retained all the way back. So what we're gonna do is line up the gold triangle of the actual CPU corner and line it up on the board so we can actually see it's pointing this way. So I'm gonna find the corner, point it towards here, and we're just gonna slightly just let that fly into place. And you can actually tell too because it won't wiggle around, stuff like that. You're gonna just like 
Do it again, double check. Yep, see, just pops in place. With that, we can just push the little lever down and our CPU is now installed. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is install the back plate for actually our motherboard into the case. So what we're gonna do is make sure the inward part is pointing outwards. So you can see by the roughness on this side, it's a little bit rougher than normal. What we're gonna do is just plop this on in here. We should be able to just perfectly lined up. With that though, our motherboard IO is installed. With that though, we can now line up our actual bracket for our actual motherboard with the actual back here. We line this up like so, we should be good. So what we do now is install our motherboard by screwing into the mounting slots. The next thing we're going to do is install the right cooler. So what we're going to do is go to the back here of the uh, motherboard. We're really going to get the plate we got with the motherboard that came with it. We're going to just line this up like so. With that, what we're going to do is then grab our cooler. What we're going to do is line up the four points with, of course, the four points on our actual back plate here. What we're going to do is add a little bit of pressure on each side. You'll hear it turn, and you want to just keep doing that for like a minute. Once you know it's tightened on all four ends, you are good to go with your CPU Wraith and Cooler Installer. What we're going to do is take this actual header and plug it into the CPU fan up top. You can see it's a CPU fan there. We're just going to line this on up like so. Our four pins. And then we're just going to guide that in there. And bang, our CPU cooler is installed. The next thing we're going to do is install our M.2. We're just going to take the tooth and point it down on the motherboard and line it on up. We're actual M.2 slot. We have two of them on this motherboard, um, if I remember correctly. And we want to slip this on in here. Once that's slipped on in there, what we want to do is get a screw and tie it and screw it down. What we're going to do now is just screw this on in. And with that, our M.2 is installed. There we go. M.2 is taken care of. So, I finished up adding the GPU, plugging in everything. So, best case scenario, I plug everything in and it just works. But a worst case scenario, something goes wrong and I messed up. Moment of truth, HDMI is in. Power is about to be on. Will this PC boot? That will be the question. Oh, that's a good sign. <gasps> okay, we got it. We got the PC to work. It actually worked, okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is actually install Windows onto it. What we're gonna do is just plug in our USB thumb drive for Windows 11, because I have that on hand. We're gonna start that on up. Okay, I didn't get in the BIOS, but I can always fix that later. We'll just reinstall Windows for the time being. So we can just install Windows 11. We don't have a product key, so we can just skip this part. And then what we want to do is just Windows 11 Home, custom installation, yes, install into our drive, perfect. And then it's just gonna start installing Windows. Okay, so we got Windows installed, that's all good to go. So what we get to do next is actually we're gonna do enable XMP on our computer. So we're gonna just reset here. And while we're resetting, we're gonna go into our BIOS and enable our mega, megahertz to be 13 megahertz instead of being base. So I'm gonna keep mashing the delete key right here and we are now in the BIOS. So we're going to go under advanced memory settings and you can see I already have XMP enabled. But for example, if you want to enable it, you got to go to extreme memory profile. You got to just make sure from disable to enable. And then when you've done that, you're good to go. And then you just exit and save. And with that, our PC memory is now what it's rated speed is. So now that this PC is finished, we're going to close the slider panel here. Go game with it. But at the exact same time while we're gaming, we're going to stream with this PC just to show you guys how good this thing is when you actually start gaming and streaming of it. It's actually insane.
as soon as we started doing cyberpunk we started to notice some lag with the stream but then again it is cyberpunk which is honestly one of the more newer games that have been a lot more demanding a lot more higher res than most games and honestly i will quickly say cyberpunk on high even with like this gpu and streaming we weren't having as much problems anymore after that one lag incident but still Cyberpunk is a really good looking game. And I don't blame it, that's why it was laggy, but man, this game looks freaking good in high setting. So as you watch right there, it was able to stream 720p at 60 FPS plus some other games with absolutely no problem. There was a little bit of dilemma with Cyberpunk, but Cyberpunk is a very intensive game. It was never really made for like playing 1080p, you're playing on higher res, you're playing to have a better GPU, but still a game near 60 fps not entirely there but when he gamed on apex legends uh what is it the finals and some of the other stuff it was able to run it while streaming at the exact same time with no problems whatsoever over 100 fps most times around but it's honestly just kind of crazy to think about so this is a great pc if you got 500 bucks on hand you want to build for yourself and of course you want to spend a little bit more money you get a better gpu get the 3060 12 gig model says 1660 and yeah, but what do you guys think about the streaming PC here today? Do you guys think it's a good build? Do you think it's a bad build? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you guys enjoyed this video here today, make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed to some of future tech content because I got a lot more stuff planned for February. We got a monitor review video. We got a few actual capture card review videos and we got some other stuff here. And if you guys have anything you want to see a video on, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys when I want Tech Grant out.